Hey Chamber family, it's Izzy. One of my priorities at my Chamber this week has been to work on my virtual membership orientation. This includes a series of videos that I'm still working on that will allow members to learn more about Chamber membership and how to update their business directory listing and more online. That way they can do it at any time they want to and of course frees up some of my time as well. To record these videos, I've been using a screen grabber called Flashback Express 5, which is by Blueberry Software. I've actually just been using the free version, um, and you're watching it right now, that allows me to screen record um, what I'm doing. Um, so to do this, I recommend just Googling Flashback Recorder, or going to flashbackrecorder.com. This is what it looks like, and when you open it, this is what that looks like. And so to start, you would just go to File, Record New Movie. And then I recommend selecting Region. Make sure you're recording your sound. And you'll see when you, um, these are kind of like my two options that I have installed in my computer. And as you're talking, this line right here will fluctuate so you'll know that something is working. And then you would hit Record. And then I recommend using the Width and Height settings of 1280 by 720. This is um, the correct aspect ratio for YouTube, and it also is a little bit smaller than my screen. So while I might have a PowerPoint where you can see it within the screen, I might have my notes off to the side that I can read. As I mentioned, I'm using the free version of Flashback Express to record my videos. I'm using the free version, which has limited to no editing capabilities, but there's one thing that I will always need to do um, with the video I just recorded. These purple icons show that the file type is actually specifically for Flashback Express, and these will only work in Flashback Express. Before I can use them either on YouTube or in a different editing program, I need to transfer it to a different kind of um, file type. And this is one that is more of a video file. Um, this is actually a Windows Media Audio video file, um, WMVV, and because it looks like you can play it, I can play it, which means this is the type that I need to be able to upload to YouTube. So to do that, I will actually go to Flashback Express. I will need to open that Flashback Express file Here we go, and again, it's that purple. It looks like the logo. Um, and when I save them, I tend to, tend to type raw so that I know that that's the raw footage and hasn't been edited. Um, so I've opened the file, and you can see it's kind of um, going through the timeline where I can preview it if I want to, but I really don't need to because I'm gonna edit it using something else. So what I'm going to do is export it. So I just clicked on file, export, and I like WMVV, but you might also just try MP4. Um, those are the two that I think are pretty common. So I'm going to click OK. Um, yes, I want the whole movie. I don't want to change the aspect ratio or anything. Um, I want the maximum quality just because it's me. And I just want to make sure that I am exporting the sound and then I will click export. If you're able to record everything in one shot, you're actually going to be able to update very limitedly um, in YouTube by clicking on edit video and clicking on editor. From here, the easiest slash only thing that I've figured out how to do on my own is actually to trim it which means that you can cut off just a little bit at the beginning and at the end, which might include any awkward breathing, but you won't really be able to edit things in the middle of it. While you're using the YouTube editor, I also re recommend doing transcripts. Clicking on Add, Transcribe and Auto Sync. What will this allow you to do is you will actually be able to type out what you're saying in the video so that it adds adds captions. And personally, this is important to me as I read them. Um, obviously, it's important for accessibility reasons, 
but it's also just another way um, for your listeners to better understand what you're saying or to go back and read what you said. MyChamber invests in the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, which includes software like Photoshop, and it also has Adobe Premiere Pro, which is an advanced video editing software. If I'm honest, and it's a little challenging to learn, um, and if that is a problem, then I do recommend finding something easier. Um, like if you have a Mac, you already have iMovies installed, and I highly recommend that software. And then there's obviously a lot more online to choose from. Um, but I really wanted to learn Premiere Pro because once you can do something in it, it's it's going it can just do a lot more for you uh, once you do figure out how to do it. So I'm going to do a very brief tutorial on how I actually edited these um, tutorial videos, so that if you can pick up any tip it will make learning this program just that much easier um, and if I can save you five minutes with Premiere Pro then I would love to just save you five minutes. So to start off we're going to start a new project. Name you would obviously name your project and then cho choose browse to change the folder that you save it into. Honestly I've never really touched any of these settings so you can look and see what I have already. Um, and then after that it should just always do that and then you would select OK. I have already started mine because this is not my first version of this video so I'm going to select benefits and membership because that's the video I'm working on and I haven't put any media in it. So the left hand side of this is going to change a lot because this is where the different settings that I can get, get into are going to open. But for now I want to click on this double arrow which is going to let me choose from these options and I want media browser. This is where I'm going to find the media that I need to put into my video. So as you can see I already have some favorites saved which make navigating a lot quicker but I'm assuming you don't yet. So if you need to look under local drive C, which is your operating system, then go to users and Izzy, which is my name, so just find your name. Um, and this is where things like my documents and my pictures are going to be. And then once you have this up, you can just right click something and then go to add to favorites and then they'll start appearing at the top. Then obviously you want to find the video that you've been working on. And I'm going to click and drag it over to my timeline. And this box down here is the timeline. And I'm just going to make some room so I can see better. Um, so visually this will show all the media that you have overlaid onto your video. Um, and the amount of time that you have selected it for. And there's a few different rows. So the first three are going to be visual, so the visual part of your video, and the bottom three are audio. If I needed to, I can always add pictures on top. I could do the same thing, and I'm going to add them to a new line of visuals. That way, when my video gets to that point in time, my picture is going to show on top and you can see where it is right here. And you can make it longer, so this is the amount of time. You can see that gray box is changing numbers. You could also do it by right clicking and looking at your different options. And one thing that I tend to do with videos is I will go to scale to frame size. And that will just enlarge the picture to fit into my frame as big as it can without cutting anything off. Another thing that we are probably going to do is trim the video. When you trim a video, you are just editing the very beginning or ending of it to be a little bit shorter. Um, so I'm going to select it. And you see where I've got this red bar with a red arrow and I'm just going to drag it and this is going to cut off some of the video. And what I'm looking for is right here where these wavelengths start, this 
this is probably the pause where I was waiting to start recording or pull the right screen up. So this is what I want to delete. And if you don't see those, you can zoom in by hitting Control A on your keyboard and scrolling with your mouse wheel. And you can also just scroll to the beginning of uh, your timeline and hit play to just listen for it. And once I've done that, I'm going to move my video back to the beginning. Otherwise, there would just be an awkward silence for a little while. One thing I like about using Premiere Pro instead of a f the free Flashback Express or just the in YouTube editor is that I can do more than just trim the video. I can actually edit out parts of the middle so that if I know I messed up, I can just cut that out. Or if there's an awkward pause or silence while I try to figure out what, was, what I was going to say next, I can cut that extra five seconds out. And to do that, I would look for where I knew the error was. So um, I might have sh shown something on my screen that I knew was different or wrong. So I could visually pick it out really quick. Um, but then what I do is I will go over to the left of the timeline and I want the one that looks like a razor blade and that's called the razor tool. If you select it, find the part in time on your video and just click, you can see something happened and what it is is that it separated my video into two videos so now I can trim these as well and then I will just move that back on top so that it will hypothetically flow seamlessly. Once I'm done editing my video, I'm going to go to File, Export, and Media. So this is the ex in the export settings, I want format H.264. And for preset, I usually just scroll down to where, if you can see it, it says YouTube 720. Um, I have already specifically recorded my video by setting the Flashback Express size to 1280 by 720. So this will line up perfectly. Um, and then where it says output name, I need to click on that so I can edit the name. And this is where I will name the final video. Um, if nothing else, I'll take out raw so that I know that this is the finished product. Then you want to make sure export video and export audio are both checked. And that's all the settings that I touch. So honestly, I have no idea. I don't even know what these do. Um, so now I'm just going to hit export and I will export my video into a .mp4 and then I will be able to upload it to YouTube. 